where our crows last landed, they convened at the Fangless Stronghold. One, not of their own volition. One, rescued from a dangerous vampire, or so it seems. Our crows are grouped together, ready to embark on their first investigation. Maisie has been carted off to solitary, awaiting a verdict of her fate. Rowena is sticking close to her rescuers, keeping her head on a swivel. Akima is just fascinated by these friends that fate has seemed to brought into her life. Now we go to the office of Hrothgar, Captain the Fankless, as Sylvan and Gilly debrief him on the capture of Maisie. Let's see what mischief our crows get into this time. You are all coming into the Fangless Stronghold. Syl Sylvan and Gilly, you let a couple of guards take Maisie away, but with you right now is uh, Rowena and Akima, um, and you are now debriefing with Hrothgar. So, standing in the middle of his conference room, what are you guys doing? Well, since Sylvan has to be... Since Sylvan is the technically... The, the veteran in this crew. He just approaches Hrothgar and... Have they been talking for a while? Uh, you, just, you just got into the room with him, oh. so he's just kind of standing there and turns around and noticing your approach. Hrothgar! I, I approach Hrothgar to start just talking about what happened. <clears throat> oh, good. Sylvan, Gilly, you're back. How, d how did it go? Well... It could have gone better. We did catch the individual who has been responsible for the string of killings, but... No, you didn't. She's not very convinced. That's a little... It's a little half-foot by the name of Maisie. Now, what I am worried about is that this tiefling with us has gotten tangled up with vampires. Now, as the Fangless, vampires happen to be one of the most deadly and dangerous factions here in Salago. We've known for a while that they've been operating as an underground as an underground syndicate, but now they're starting to come more into the open. And with this tiefling, we may actually be able to crack some of the secret of what exactly they've been plotting. What are your thoughts on this, Gilly? Here's my 50-page report, sir. <laughs> when did you have time to write that? I'm very good at multitasking. Obviously. Seems you found more individuals that had infractions. Yes, but unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to apprehend any of them at the time because I was following order, sir. Very good, very good. We'll, we'll track them down and give them their, uh, their dues, their audits later. Thank you, Gilly. Well, uh, thank you so much for catching this. I don't exactly know what to call this. This was quite the devious mind at work here, and we had been tracking her for months. So I'm very happy and also a little shocked you were able to catch her so quickly. So with that being said... Um, they didn't catch me, sir. Oh, you've been carted off. Oh, <laughs> you're in a completely different spot right now. I, ima I imagine that she's that we've just been hearing her shout from her cell this whole time. She you just can you magically didn't, you hear didn't us. Catch me! <laughs> I was going with it. <laughs> well, with her gone, and with your suggestion of vampires being more prevalent in the city, something odd has been occurring. And we think it may be related to the, vamp the vamp uh, vampires. We haven't, they don't have an organized name that we know of, and it seems kind of sporadic, but there's a few things in this case that uh, seem to line up too much. There's an MO that it just keeps following a sequence, and I'm afraid that vampires may be involved. So with that... Hrothgar. If you remember, several months ago, before I was assigned to be Gilly's mentor, I reported to you that while I was escorting a small family of halflings through the northern woods, 
I encountered that freshly turned Nosferatu. Nosferatu are among the most savage types of vampires. And she had she had literally been freshly turned. It was it was honestly heartbreaking to have to destroy this young orc that had been turned into a vampire. So if you remember, I did report that. So we have known that this was coming. What have you known? Well, like I was saying, we do recognize the reports and we knew they were outside the city, moving in the towns on the outskirts and farther away from us up north. But with uh, this recent event with this tiefling that you brought in, um, it appears that there may be some more things that are connected to them than we first thought. We don't know how they're moving and what they're moving towards, but there is something happening. So with that, just so you know, it seems that they've been targeting certain higher, uh, not noble people in the city, but uh, better off people. People who have many means of income and extravagant taste in things, in particular items. It's quite strange. Um, but I'll give you the case file on this. And these are the no uh, this is what we know so far of this. So he'll hand you a dossier <coughs> that has some information. As you start scanning through it, you notice that... Uh, Hrothgar, was it? Hrothgar. Hrothgar. Okay. Runa's going to come put her hand on Hrothgar's arm. And she's going to say, I, I am a... And she noticed he's very muscular. <laughs> and so she's just going to kind of... Hold on to his arm. I may be of um, some assistance. I know. I know a little bit of information about um, one of the vampires that was chasing me. His name, well, at least the name he went by that I knew of was James. And um, I, I had just kind of stabbed him um, in a breakup, turned bad when I found out he was a vampire because, yeah. So, I might be able to be of some service to help, you know, catch these guys and kill them. Go ahead and roll me a deception or persuasion check. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Not lying. Because maybe you're trying to be sneaky. Okay, I rolled a seven for persuasion. For persuasion? Yeah, that was not good. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. So, uh, he notices that maybe you're trying to flatter him or even trying to get on his good side to kind of flirt with him more. Yeah, because he's got freaking awesome arms. He's a Rather than wanting to be helpful, he, th he thinks uh, he's starting to think that you're doing this to get on his good side so you can get with him. Yeah, Rowena is going to be the horny character. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Hey, hey, it's okay. Is paladins and clerics. Goodness gracious. She's not a Fangless member. <laughs> I, I know, but I'm saying that they are <laughs> paladins and clerics for the most part. Hey, they've got needs. So Hrothgar is going to look over at you, Rowena, and just take your hand and gently remove it and put it down. I appreciate it. And, you know, he's going to lean in closer to Sylvan and Gilly. Maybe you should keep her close by and keep an eye on her. Who knows what the vampires did to her? Um, so, as you start scanning through the dossier, uh, you start noticing a, a couple of patterns um, within these cases that um, this particular per uh, the people that have gone missing um, bought some particular an uh, antiques from a traveling antiquity salesman. Uh, he travels all over Salago, it appears. Uh, there's uh, uh, records of people going missing in Sobol and being sold antiquities in Sobol and in Vanilm and in Beolor and in all these different, all pretty much every district. There's been at least two or three disappearances over the course of the last three or four months. I would like to roll an investigation check to see if I recognize any of the names in the dossier. Nine. You, it takes a while for you to get through, and uh, but you come into some of the more recent ones. Um, one that happened just a couple weeks back, uh, the one that helped fill out the report, her name is Beatrice Bergerac, and you would recognize her as 
the niece of Florak. Bergerac. Hrothgar, was, Mad- was Mademoiselle Florak put into protective custody after giving... No, she's still at home right now. I have a close connection with the F- Bergerac family. We should probably start there. Gilly, let's get moving. Yes, sir. Rowena, s- tag along. Let's go. Can Maisie come? I like her. Hrothgar. <laughs> a word. Okay. Aside from everyone. Okay. Before we do that, we're going to cut away really quick. So we pan away to um, a, a particular location in the thing, the stronghold. It's actually called uh, uh, Solitary Confinement. Uh, in there, uh, it's, it has two guards at the entrance, and there's only three people in there. It's very well protected and very well guarded. Usually they can put in four, five, six people in here. They just let them do their thing. But there's been so much screaming and maniacal laughter going on that they had to actually bring in a, a cage for their newest member, Maisie, <laughs> to separate her from the rest of the, the uh, prisoners at this time. So with that, Maisie, you're inside of a cage inside of solitary confinement, and you have uh, just a couple of prisoners right around you. On the other side of this cage, however, they did leave a mirror bolted up against the wall. And you're able to actually look into it, and everybody else in the room can use it too. But your cage is put it in the is put in there in a way that it's hard for the other guys to get to the mirror. But they just decided they didn't care anyways. You described that in the scene from the Suicide Squad came into play, where Harley Quinn is in her cage doing acrobatics. That's what I just pictured Maisie doing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I can't do that now. <laughs> 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 So Maisie, so now Maisie's, you know, in the cage, and the you would see the other prisoners backed off to the other corner of the cage. There's <laughs> one that has some sort of bleeding wound around the lower part of his stomach, and Maisie has blood dripping out of her mouth, almost as if she is a, a vampire or something. So apparently she um, had bit one of them. They probably tried to get frisky with her, and... Uh, uh, it it didn't end well, and so she's looking at them in in the mirror. And first, she's just you know, you know, singing a a, a little song to herself. <laughs> Take these pills, you'll feel much better when you wake up numb and your brain's been severed, and your heartbeat won't be based on the weather when you sell yourself to me. Took your peace, your pain, your pleasure. And left you with one face forever. You won't hurt anymore. Be careful what you wish for. And she's looking at the mirror and she goes. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. I, and she punches the mirror. I hate you. Damn you. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm trying to be good. (laughs) Pins and needles, needles and pins. It's a happy girl who always grins. (laughs) Hey, guards. Why don't you let me out of here? There's no guards in the room with her. Oh. They're on the outside, and it's just a closed door. So you have the two prisoners in with you. Okay, then so Maisie goes, and you see her reach into her mouth, and she pulls out what looks like a little piece of dental floss, and then she just starts pulling and pulling, and and pulls out what looks like a lock pick, and then and this other little thing comes out, just a little tiny little little thing, <laughs> and uh, then she um, goes over to the to the lock in the door. And she goes, she she fools around with it. The other people look like they're going to leave, and she turns and looks at them, and they're like, they back off <laughs> into the corner. She she shuts the door. She she takes the 
uh, little thing and goes, guards, guards, help, guards, help. And she's banging on the door. So the guards hear this. Maisie, we know it's you. We're not going to fall for it this time. We know you can defend yourself. Poor Bill suffered last time. No, that's what I mean. I, I think he's going to die. <sighs> okay. Is he bleeding profusely again? Well, I think he's running out. <laughs> Did you get him again? I didn't stop. Oh, no, she got out of the cage. Okay, and you, so you start hearing the, the keys in the door, um, and they open the door. Uh, they open the door, and then... <laughs> Whee! <laughs> a, a flashbang and um, a smoke grenade goes off. And I'm going to make a stealth check and a uh, run for it. Okay, roll with advantage. So uh, I got an uh, 18 plus, I think I have 7 on my stealth. And so, um, yes. So, so, uh, so that's uh, 25 on stealth. Um, and I set off smoke in the room, too. Yeah, that'll that'll be good enough to be able to sneak past the guards as they rush in and they're just <coughs> oh, oh, damn you Maisie where are you? <coughs> and they start working back towards the, the cage that you were in well they hear the door go click and then my little picks I'm locking it <laughs> <laughs> no and you hear pounding on the door Maisie <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm just gone okay I'm finding the guards station where they normally keep their uniforms and things. All right. Um, go ahead and roll me investigation. And also... I rolled a nat 20. Yay! Yeah, you're able to see the, the comings and goings of the different guards um, and figure out where they go to rest for the night or rest from their shift and change and where they keep all their different equipment. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back to you. Um, so, uh, Akima, would you have been stay? Would you have stayed with the group as they went to Hrothgar to debrief, or would you have gone somewhere else? Uh, I probably would have stayed with them because Akima likes new people. She likes trying to figure out new people because each new person is their own little mystery that she gets to pick apart and dig through, and she loves those. So she's she's still definitely with. Uh, with the group um but as far as doing anything she's probably just observing at this point not really doing much because she respects that gilly and sylvan are reporting to their superior but you can tell that she's got kind of like this this like twitch to her like this nervous like energy and it's because she's dying to ask gilly questions because she's read from her people like the the stories and things like that of the dragon borns but she's never met one in person and so she's like dying and itching inside to just bombard gilly with all of these questions okay okay well with that gilly you, you kind of see in the corner of your eye that akima's over there just kind of trembling and just keeps glancing over at you and just kind of like twiddling her her paws together what do you do with that is there something i can help you with oh very much yes i have millions of questions first oh no that one's not appropriate second <laughs> nope that one's not appropriate i will come back to you <laughs> I feel like she would be like kneading the air. You know how cats like make biscuits. Make biscuits. Yeah, I feel like she'd be doing that because she's so excited. <laughs> Her voice is a purr. <laughs> is there anything you wanted to add, Carrie? Um, no, I'm just I'm here to help. Okay. Uncomfortable smile. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so she's just gonna kind of like, um. She's just she you you can tell that she kind of got like poofier like the excitement like made her like her fur <laughs> stand on end and finally she's she's just like um she's just like so do do the color of your scales um indicate like moods or is it like how does your scales work like why are why are you purple well 
when a mommy dragon loves a daddy dragon, <laughs> there's a hatchling. And, and my mother was a red dragon and my father was a blue dragon and fade to black. <laughs> and then I, that's how I'm purple. <laughs> Chicka chicka brown. <laughs> brown chicken brown cow. Do we have that stripper music? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, and fade to black. <laughs> and then. Purple dragon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope somebody takes the time to animate that whole scene. <laughs> dragon. <laughs> dragon. <laughs> Black. <laughs> Purple. <With> Woo! <laughs> okay, well, wait. No, because so I was under the assumption that it was mommy dragon and daddy human. So if it's dragon and dragon, why don't you have a tail? Well, I say dragon, but it's dragon born and dragon born and... So that's where the dragonborn came from was probably dragon and human. So it's I have a, a red dragonborn mom and a red and a blue dragonborn father, and purple is almost unheard of in my culture. But typically, the color of scales Are will determine better than I would have imagined. <laughs> <laughs> and she just, she's just just so giddy with that answer, and she's like, oh beautiful you're rare but to answer your original question the the color doesn't mean moods it, it actually ha is linked with our breath weapons oh <gasps> but again i'm unique that purple's really not defined but i inherited my mother's fire breath so does that mean you'd have more than one I will have to take that up with the DM at a later date. <laughs> I feel like the answer should I, be yes. I'm like, I feel like the answer should eventually be yes. That would be really cool. Level two? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, Sylvan, you, you saw the dossier. Um, and you, this conversation is happening, happening in the background kind of, yeah. um, I don't know if you guys have moved off where, where would you have wanted to move off to? Just pulling Hrothgar aside. So you want to be left alone with Hrothgar? Yes. Okay. So this would have happened with you guys leaving the room as, uh, Sylvan stays in with Hrothgar. I wonder how I got purple skin. You hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hrothgar. We've known each other for a long time, ever since... Well, ever since you joined as a... F What's going to happen to Maisie? Well, that's what I wanted to discuss with you. She has a particular set of skills that could be very useful in this case. And judging by what you told me, she seems to have an interest in joining us. Rothgar, you and I have talked. You know where I come from. You know what I've seen in my life. This halfling does not have evil about her. And you know how I feel about evil. Well, I'll take your word for that. And looking at the crime scene and seeing what she did, I can't wholeheartedly agree that there's no evil in there. But she managed to get some high-profile criminals that we were never able to touch. And considering some other things that we found on the crime scene, not in the dossier, we found traces of blood and part uh, different body parts left around. It doesn't look like a simple burglary. It seems like they killed or took whoever had uh, been in the home and whoever had bought the, the antiquities. So I feel like you need Maisie. She ha might be able to help you figure out the motive and figure out why and the how. 
And I know you can figure out the who. That's what I'm concerned about. But listen, where's her equipment? I want her knives. I want her poisons. Give them. She's my responsibility. Okay. We'll go collect her things and then we're going to <laughs> go and collect her. So you two are going to leave now. And then you're, you're going to start heading towards uh, the uh, solitary confinement unit. Uh, as you guys go there, you realize there's a lot of guards running in that direction. What's going on? Guard, what happened? That little demon escaped. We're trying to find her. <laughs> Of course she did. All right. You keep doing your thing, but do not lay a finger on her when you find her. You tell her that I'm looking for her. Yes, sir. Can they lay a finger on her? <laughs> then they <laughs> then they have a uh you see uh one short little guard runs up to the other ones. Obviously the 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 uniform doesn't fit right. The the sleeves had to be rolled up and stuff like that. She goes up to What's going on here? The, the prisoner has escaped. Oh, my God, quick, you men with me to the east gate. <laughs> and you can, <laughs> and then the <laughs> starts running with a, a, a couple of the more gullible guards. <laughs> so you and Hrothgar would see a, a smaller person directing some of the other guards and running off. Maisie, stop. And so she, she turns and, and looks. I have an escaped prisoner. I have to capture, sir. Okay, before we continue this conversation, we're going to go over to Rowena. Well, I was just, I was going to cast Thaumaturgy, and I was going to scream, Maisie, let's go play a game! Are, are you going to, would you have followed um, Hrothgar and Sylvan as they came out of the office? No, but I feel like I would have, like, recognized that she had gotten out, and just, just let's play a game, Maisie. So you've been trying to find her then? Yeah. Okay. I like her. <laughs> so go ahead. Um, we'll uh, go ahead and roll investigation. We'll say that you were looking for her while she was going to the guards room and gathering up the stuff that she has. I'm good at that one. You're grounded. Okay. Well, she's apparently not good at that. Only got a eleven. <laughs> grounded. Time out. I feel like first <laughs> level an eleven is op eleven is good. For level one, session one. I want to be, like, behind her. Like, when she's looking, I want to do one of those things where she's going like that, and I lean with her, and then she turns around, and I, I'm just, like, right behind her. For a second. <laughs> You're shadow-stepping yeah, her. Shadow <laughs> Wait. I think I saw something. Nope. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, um you'll eventually see Rowena start coming uh, towards where you just saw Maisie uh, run off. And so, and Gilly, I'm assuming you've, you've gone with Sylvan or would you have gone somewhere else? Well, you, Sylvan walked out with, with the commander. So I would have stayed in. I'm bombarding her with questions. So we're still wherever we were yeah, at. Yeah. Cause I didn't, I wasn't given any. So you two are just going back and forth while you're following Hrothgar and Sylvan. Okay. All right. Now, Sylvan, back to you. Maisie. Listen. I know you don't want. You don't want to take orders. I know that quite frankly, we didn't start off on the best foot. But right now, we need you. We need your skills. There are a lot of people that are being hurt. And we need someone who can be a friend to those in need. And you happen to fit that bill. And you're a apparently a proven and tried investigator. So why not? Why don't you join us? You're my responsibility. So when you uh, are talking with Maisie with this, a guard runs up to you and Hrothgar. Captain, sir, um, we went to collect Maisie's things, and they are gone. I don't know what happened to them. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you people are idiots. You know, I want this ground, all these grounds, double-checked and triple-checked. Now get to it, soldier. Roll a deception check for me. <laughs> I roll an investigation. Yeah, I, I, what are you investigating? 
to see if I notice any like lumps in Maisie's clothing where she's hid her stuff. And I got a dirty 20. You're good dice. <laughs> so Akima is going to see this totally unproportioned uniform to this this person and she's going to just be like absolutely not and she's just going to like rush up and completely alter the clothes so that they actually fit now just while this is happening. <laughs> That's perfect. I will I roll it. for it. I love that. <laughs> In the process, her knife like falls out of her bra or something. Oh, did you know. use that one? There you go. Have another one. <laughs> I totally succeeded in doing that. By the way, I rolled a tw- uh, got a twenty-one. Nice, good job. Yeah. So, so we'll, you you uh, do this like cartoon zip around her and yeah. get her all like tailored up and Maisie, you're like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> to include the lumps where the pot where all of her stuff should be now tailored perfectly to all the lumps <laughs> <laughs> so Maisie, you're being poked and prodded here for a minute at right after you told this guard to uh run off um he looks at you and wait a second you're not a captain sir that's Maisie. well duh very good sergeant <laughs> now please go clean up the solitary confinement y- yes sir <laughs> okay you know um, I, I, you can't afford me, but you know what? I, I'm willing to consult. I'm not, I, I don't have anything else going on today, so I'll donate my time. Good. Well, Captain, you heard her. She's my responsibility. I'll make sure that only the right people end up on the, uh, the business end of her blade. Gilly, I trust you'll be able to keep a second set of eyes on her for us, won't you? Yes, of course, sir. Whatever's needed. Now, just remember, she's both of your responsibility. And depending on how this goes, this can reflect very favorably on the both of you. And Maisie, I assume you have your things. Please be deliberate in the way that you use your equipment. I'm always very deliberate. In everything I do, sir. Roll me an insight check, really quick. <laughs> Sorry, uh, fourteen. Um, you see him straighten a little bit when you say that, and you can almost you almost think there's a little bit of like a, a quiver, and uh, he just immediately turns around and starts marching off. Excuse me, Hrothgar. Yes, Rowena. Um. I was wondering if, if maybe I mean you want me to go with this group. I'm assuming, um, I I kind of out of a place to like, I don't know, call my own, and I'm looking for a purpose. Is there any way I could maybe join the thing list or like help somehow? On your way out, there's a at the front desk. Uh, ask uh, Miss Smith there to uh, give you the paperwork to fill out to be a member of the Fangless. Uh, there's going to be a few things you have to f- uh, sign up with, and you need at least two um, people to vouch for you. And one of the spots for you. Oh, thank you. She had you. the paperwork she stole from the guard shack. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. She rolled to see if she was going to hit on one again, but no. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I, I I held my composure. So Hrothgar is walking away now, and you guys are left in the hallway with the guards running around still trying to clean up Maisie's mess. Rowena. Yeah? No matter what they say, leave Maisie's signature as one of the recommendations. Okay. Anyway. Do you want to sign the other one? Not right now. Rude. We have a job to do. So, looks like... The five of us are about to set out. In the next 30 minutes, I would like us to s- head to the home of Beatrice de Bergerac. Take the time you need to get ready, get your equipment, and then meet me at the entrance of the headquarters, and we will set out. I'm ready. She's, she's got a clipboard. She's got a, a, a knife that's sticking out of her, her bra. <laughs> The woman's pocket. It is a woman's pocket. <gasps> I've never heard that term before, and I'm going to start using it. Really? <laughs> it makes sense. It's a woman's pocket. A woman's pocket. 
I love that. Someone <laughs> please buy Gary a bra for next session. So <laughs> and just start whipping. Make it lacy. It. it has to be lacy. It has to be lacy. <laughs> well, uh, your your captain has given you all orders. Uh, thirty minutes is what you have to get prepared. In the thirty minutes, uh, is there anything in particular that you guys would wish to do? Uh, I prepped that um, that bag thing that I was telling you earlier that had the the crushed glass, sand, and powdered um, ghost pepper powder in like a pillowcase sort of material with holes poked in it inside a Are you burlap making bag. Itching powder? That's not itching powder. In, inside that's... a burlap bag, and then that that's tied with a, a rope. So I have that on pouch uh, on my side. And I've also taken some of the concentrated um, um, uh, juice from the ghost peppers, and I've put it in a uh, spray bottle. That would be Maze. Yep. <laughs> um, well, with the things that you can find around, uh, they, they don't really have spray bottles, but they do have uh, pipettes and other things. So if you need to apply it. Perfume bottle, water balloon. <laughs> Oh, perfume bottle you'd be able to find, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, you'll you'll be able to grab all that stuff, and perfume you go ahead and roll me sleight of hand if you're doing this without be wanting to be caught. Uh, now, some of this I was I was doing while they were searching for me, and I was raiding the guard shack and going through the the guards' yeah. personal lockers <laughs> and raiding it. But with the sleight of hand, I need prescription purple glasses, honey. <laughs> Let, put that put that on the list, please. But my um, a sleight of hand, so I got a 15 plus whatever bonus for the chaos that I've <laughs> created. Yeah, with everything that's going on, that's plenty to be able to get around and not be noticed, especially being a halfling. <laughs> so you're able to get all those things. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? What, uh, what Is there anything in particular that you're wanting to get? I'm actually just going to go to the armory and just refill my quiver so that I have a full. Okay. Um, they are, uh, two silver, an arrow. Yeah, five for one gold. I can math, guys. Ha ha! Um, <laughs> Rowena's gonna fill out that paperwork, and she's gonna see if she can convince Gilly to sign it for her. Right. Hey, Gilly. Yeah? So, I was wondering if you would maybe sign this paperwork for me. I want to to join the Fingless and help stop evil and just, I just want to become a better person. Why do I feel like that's not entirely true? Like, I, like I know that, that that's genu <laughs> genuinely what you're trying to do, but just the way you said that it gives me pause. It's like, <laughs> are you really? Like, I mean, I'm not going to lose my chaos. <laughs> that is such a noble desire. Thank you. You're welcome. You should have more faith in people, Kima. <laughs> I am a naturally curious cat, and that just sounded off to me. <laughs> I think she wants to turn the page on her life and, and make better choices. Like, that's the most noblest thing you can do. Yeah, yeah. But you can sow chaos in while you do that. <laughs> I would be honored to sign that for you. Thank you so much. It's all filled out. You going to go turn that in then? Yeah. I'll go find the secretary. Is she going to be cranky? <laughs> I feel like most secretaries you are cranky. You forgot to do your paperwork, Wazowski. <laughs> you need to plug your nose and then do it. Gilly, is there anything in particular that you're getting done? Um, Gilly would be in her quarters just making sure everything was in order. Um, you know, straightening the crooked pencils on, on her desk and <laughs> making sure the corners on the bed are, you know, nice and crisp and sharp corners. And reviewing the scroll of, of laws one more time before she heads out into the fray. Okay. So as you're uh, going through and just getting everything nice and orderly in your room, you feel this coldness creep up your back. As if something's behind you. I would turn around. Would I see anything? When you turn around, you see this um, semi-transparent figure. 
you can't quite make out the the finer details there's a bit of longer hair you can't really tell if it's a human elf or anything like that but it's humanoid mm -hmm. um there's uh what appears to be a lot of holes in the clothing on this particular individual um and there uh, on one hand there's a missing pinky and the figure rasps out Beware, beware the de Can you repeat that, but in a normal voice, beware the what? <laughs> so he said, beware the antiquities. Antiquities, okay. That is not what my brain heard. <laughs> I heard antiques, that was close. I nope. heard antiquities. I, I heard it, antiquities. Nope. What did Abby hear? <laughs> Beware the titties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's because maybe Maisie has a knife in hers. <laughs> but, and this is coming from the one who said that thing, remember, that everyone was it was questionable? Kinky? Yeah. Yep. It was kinky. <laughs> it was kinky. It was kinky. It was kinky. <laughs> we all heard it. <laughs> Anyways, back to G Gilly, because I can't pronounce your full name. Gilly Anthony. Well, this is why I go by Gilly. <laughs> right? Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Yes. Um, okay, beware the antiquities. I'm not sure what that means, but I will be on the watch out for them. Antiquities are uh, ways of old, uh, the, the uh, ancient symbols and, and, and practices and things like that. Somehow Maisie got into your room. You have no idea how that <laughs> happened. <laughs> Maisie just pops up. She's like Daisy. They just <laughs> you're you're everywhere, aren't you? Yeah, you know, All of a sudden, I was just I was going through the the drawers in your room, and you're like, you turn to you know yell at me, and next thing you know, I'm your doors open. You hear little feet running down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> so now your doors are in disorder, but the uh. the figure has since evaporated, has oh dear gone away. It's not the first time that's happened, and probably won't be the last. <laughs> the ghost or the drawers? The ghost. <laughs> probably both. <laughs> so she goes over and to straighten up her drawers. <laughs> okay, so the half hour goes by. Um, Rowena, uh, you've gone to the front desk. You come to see this um, middle-aged elf woman mm -hmm. sitting behind the desk filling out paperwork scribbling uh, just scrawling down different things and then you see uh, the swish of her signature and she just has this giant pile here and a smaller pile here one's marked in one's marked out and she's taking from this excuse me ma'am yes um i've completed the paperwork necessary to um to join the the thing list and i'm just here to turn it in Hand me it, please. She uh, starts going over it, looking through. <sighs> you weren't supposed to fill out here. Oh. You're missing a signature here. Oh. How long have you known your recommendations? A while. <laughs> How long's a while? Just a while. I can get different recommendations if I need to, but I felt like these were the strongest ones. Okay, hang on one moment. She sets uh, your your paperwork aside, and then uh, on her little quill, she does a little twist, and some like little runes start glowing on it. She lifts it up, and it stays hovering there, and she puts a paper underneath it, and then it just starts writing for her. She takes your paperwork and walks to the back and disappears behind a curtain. Did I miss anything? I just filled it all out ah secretaries just crazy and then at this point everybody uh would be coming to this is the front of the the thingless stronghold so everybody would be all you guys would be coming to the front counter area where she's at now so God, i wish i had like a familiar or something that i could like send to go watch her but we're not to that level yet so <laughs> or well, i can't remember what that spell is but yeah i don't have anybody to go watch her all right, Rowena, how's your paperwork going? It's done. The guy, your secretary's grumpy. Anyway, she just took it to the back and she used like a magic 
quill and she went bloop, 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 and ran away so and you see the the papers are moving off the in pile underneath the pen and then back into the out pile what was her name again miss smith oh miss smith can be difficult miss smith it's sylvan i know you can hear me back there <laughs> i i know you can hear me you're being ignored <laughs> Give me a moment. Oh, okay. And I actually jump over the desk and walk behind the curtain. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm peeking around because Maisie's like the Energizer Bunny. She's like running down the halls, peeking in little doors, stuff like that. She sees that, looks at the pen, sees it auto signing things. She quickly takes a, a form out that's a promotion form to like captain, <laughs> and she puts it on the pile so it, it goes to the thing to be signed by the thing and goes on. She's like. <gasps> <laughs> and, then, and then you just see her run away. <laughs> now, was that your promotion or just some random Joe she that just got promoted? She set her signing pen on automatic, so I filled out the promotion for for Maisie <laughs> to become just, just <laughs> to be promoted. <laughs> okay, so Sylvan, as you jump over the counter, roll me a dexterity saving throw. He's gonna get magicked. I bet. 11 but it is but it is my proficiency so do i add my proficiency bonus it's a saving throw so oh, okay. whatever your saving throw modifier right okay so 11 okay and now subsequently make me a strength saving throw 13 okay so as you jump over uh the counter and land on the floor the you guys can't hear it sylvan hears it there's a r loud <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, these gold tethers pop up out of the floor out of nowhere. They grab your wrist, uh, your elbow, and start pulling you back. And then there's ones that attach onto your ankles and bring you down onto your knees in this uncomfortable, like, sprawling position. And now you're stuck. Huh. That, uh, that looks like a fun position, Sylvan. <laughs> the important oh, question oh. is, are his legs spread? Miss ah! Smith! <laughs> Get out here. I know you're there. <laughs> the gold, really, the gold rope or whatever it is, it really complements your, your skin tone. I hate tieflings. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got two of us surrounding you being super fascinated. One is just interested <laughs> in how this, this whole contraption works. The other one, not so much. I've always been more of a bird person. So um, after the, the want noise went off and you got bound down, <clears throat> the curtain rustles and Miss Smith comes around holding another clipboard. You've been approved. Sylvan, how many times have I told you not to jump the counter? How many of times how many times have I told you that I don't care that you're a century older than I am? You need to help me out and you need to help my friends out. Honey, I'm much older than you. Oh. Oh. Uh oh. She does a little flick of her wrist and she says something you can't quite make out, and you are thrown. <laughs> <laughs> and you go about 20 feet. Um, you'll take five points of bludgeoning damage Ow. as you fall onto the ground. Miss, You're a nice big. Miss Smith, <laughs> what, uh, what was that enchantment you have that ties those ropes so suddenly in their gold my goodness i could really use one of those for um some of my after hours after hours entertainment right now you're signed on as an intern goings on in the fangless stronghold will be confidential until you can reach a higher clearance level i think she just secretaried my horniness <laughs> I don't, I don't so even you know. could say she's not quite a sex retiree. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Give me one of those D sixes. <laughs> For the record, you gave me a D twelve. No, no, I didn't. It's, it's right there next to your board. Six, oh, ran into your, your no, I'm kidding. Don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that D twelve is your D twelve. Oh. <laughs> I only have D sixes by me, so. Oh. The D six ran into one of your dice. Oh, I see. You silly Billy. Okay, with that, guys, uh, now that that's all done, what are you doing? We're going to Beatrice de Bergerac's house. De Bergerac's house. So I'm apologize now when I try and say that last name. If it comes out de Barbarac, de Bar I'm just 
Sorry, now. Don't feel bad. French is a terrible language. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. It, that's not. That's not the thing. That's, 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 that's not even. That's not it's even not it. It's not my fault. Y'all are uncultured. Serrano de Bergerac is one of the most famous pieces of literature from the 18th century. No, it's just one of my favorite renditions yeah, of I Cinderella. Know. The last name is de Barbarac. Uh, so, de Bergerac. Um, they have a. a um, Kind of like a complex of apartments where the uh, the fam- oh, the whole family lives. Uh, it's in Van Ilm uh, from the Fangless Stronghold. So the Fangless, uh, I haven't told you this yet, but the Fangless Stronghold is more centralized. It's in the central dominion of Salago. Um, there in Van Ilm, it's going to take you about 20 to 30 minutes to walk there. Um, there are carts and, and carriages you guys can take as well if you want to uh, pay two silver a person. And it can speed it up a little bit. I'll foot the bill. Okay. Okay. That's so kind of you, Sylvan. Don't hit on your superiors. It doesn't end well. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only male in the party. It's <laughs> a good point, actually. <laughs> so someone who, who recognizes me uh, comes up. It looks like one of the, the uh, more sketchy people. And she whispers uh, something to me, hands me uh, a coin, and I hand her a little tiny uh, uh, vial, and then she runs off. All right. If you want to keep it secret from the party, go ahead and roll a sleight of hand. Oh, no. I just did it right out in the open. (gasps) Maisie, do you sell aqua tofana? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure what that is. No, I'm I'm a... um, I'm a curbside pharmaceutical vendor. It's one of my side hustles. Oh. Do you have a license to do that? Uh, Gilly, let it go. She's one of us. Just but, let it go. But Gilly, read the file. <laughs> <laughs> so you're all in a carriage. Uh, you're able to hell one. Um, it starts car- carting you off. Uh, they they start taking you up. Um, as you guys pull up, one moment. Okay, I'll explain myself. Aquatofana is a poison that a woman was selling as like. It was a fake cosmetic. She was selling it back in the day, and women were using it to kill their husbands because they couldn't get out of marriage, and when their husbands were beating them, you know, they needed something to get out of the bad situation. I fully support that. I mean, we shouldn't support murder, but I fully support that. I fully support women's rights as well as women's wrongs. <laughs> yes! Well, and it wasn't, it wasn't just, like, women that would buy it. It was other people, too. But, I guess men. But, um, yeah, they would do it, like... Because, you know, back in the day, women were like property and um, they didn't have a lot of control over their life. And so, yeah, she was. Are you wanting to kill somebody? I don't know. Maybe. I just, I saw an opportunity to make an Aqua Tafana reference. And so I did. Oh, no. Describe your childhood. Specifically, what was your relationship like with your parents? My parents are stone. They're, They're stoned? No, they are stones. Would you two... Okay. I didn't turn him to stone. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe that's the person uh, I want to get rid see, of. It's called let's revenge. See. Let's see. Um, if you had to eat one body part on uh, a human body, what would it be? Ew. Mm, okay. Good, no, livers good. have medicinal properties. Good. good. Right. I mean, that's an interesting response. <laughs> <laughs> There are several comments that could be made right now. <laughs> as as you guys are riding the carriage and this is happening. <laughs> um, it's true. You come to the de Bergerac. Uh, what's a fancy word for apartment in French? Like a fancy apartment? Uh, logement. Lagement. It's actually a cognate, so it's actually a partiment. So, but we'll go with logement. Why did we have to go French? With why are th- why are th- why why did you get to choose? <laughs> Maybe I wanted Spanish. Anyway. I will butcher <laughs> all not native English words. I love you, David. <laughs> I was just involved. Stay.